Two photographers, two cameras, two films, and a bit of fun. <laughs> Yeah, so this past weekend I challenged my friend Noah to uh, a bit of a fun photo shoot. I challenged him to bring me a camera from his collection that I knew nothing about and uh, I'd do the same for him. And then we'd meet up in town and we'd have a bit of a, a bit of a shoot. So the challenge was the cameras that we knew nothing about. Um, we picked a black and white film and then we also um, did a criteria of an hour which yeah it's a bit of a strange one that one actually 36 frames in an hour probably better with 24 frames but um, yeah we uh, rose to the challenge um, as you'll see from the photos I'm about to uh, put up I wasn't actually 100% impressed with uh, Delta 400 and I'm not saying it's the film because it might be that my chemicals are coming to the end of its life um, and the scanner probably hasn't picked up best in it, but there's definitely the film could definitely be better. I guess I'm getting streaks from where the 35 um, millimeter holes are. There seems to be some kind of burn from the chemicals, which I don't know if that is down to agitation or what. So yeah, it's a fun little challenge, and uh, let me know what you think. Just challenge each other with either a different camera or a different film or some kind of challenge like the the colour red or um, anything really just purely to get yourself out there get shooting and to think outside the box and to not actually worry about what you're shooting just go and shoot off the cuff a bit like the idea of lamography but yeah have a look at the images let me know what you think and yeah hopefully I'll post some more challenges like this Hi, it's Richard. I'm out with my friend Noah today. We're uh, doing a bit of a challenge. We're going to go round and we're going to shoot some film. Um, I don't know what camera he's got for me and he doesn't know what camera I've got for him. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go out and shoot some film around town and, uh, yeah, have a bit of a challenge and have a bit of fun. Right, Noah, what camera have okay. I got to shoot? Here's my challenge for you. There you go. <laughs> Find out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're shooting with a Rulai 35 LED. Come on, focus. God, this bloody thing's useless sometimes. So, uh, tell me a bit about this one then. Okay, well, the challenge here is that, of course, it's a 35mm. Da, da, da. Uh, the challenge is you have to guesstimate your focusing distance. Okay. It doesn't have focus aid, okay? So you have the viewfinder, yep. you can frame, but in order to get the uh, focus right, you have to guesstimate. So it's like and, zone and focus. It's, 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 you can use zone focusing and, or just the distance in feet, okay? Or you can be like F8 and be there. Whatever strategy you decide, <laughs> this is the challenge, you're doing it. <coughs> Does it need a battery? Uh, it, it, the battery operates the light meter, okay. the built-in light meter, and it's yeah. called LED because it has, uh, I forgot where it was, possibly in the viewfinder. Yeah. So you set the ISO that you're using, yeah. this is where you put the battery, and uh, when you turn it on, apparently the battery is dead, or not there, yeah. but it doesn't operate the shutter, yeah. okay? So you're setting the aperture here, yeah. okay, right. so this goes from bulb. Yep. One thirtieth up to five hundredth. Right. Okay. Awesome. So uh, you set it. You put the. You enter your settings manually. Yep. The only thing that the meter does, the the LED meter, it tells you it whether in these lighting conditions you're overexposed or underexposed. Okay. Yep. So if you're doing something by hand, you don't really need it. Okay. Which brings me to the second part of your challenge. <laughs> you're metering with this. <coughs> Nice, right, okay. Okay, and this is a Copio, uh, cold shoe mounted, not really a spot, but anyway, it's a light meter. 
Uh, I've just checked the battery this morning and it says it's here. So if, if, if it runs out of battery while you're using it, you're stuck on your own, okay? <laughs> Use the hatch for high light, high exposure values. Yeah. So in daylight you would set it to H, in low light you would set it to L, okay? So cool. you just keep it on H and again, you put your ISO and then you follow, so for example, H is red, you follow the red, the red dot. Yeah. Okay, so if you're using H, you're aligning the red dot and it tells you what the values are. Okay. If you're using L, you align the white one. Okay. Okay, does that work? Yeah. So, yeah, something for you to figure out. Thank you. All right. There you go. Now, what am I shooting with? <laughs> Your challenge, should you uh, choose to accept it. This one doesn't need a light meter. Okay. So it's a, okay, selenium cell. So it's a selenium cell. And is the cell working? Not 100% sure. So I have. Oh. <laughs> you got something for me there. So <laughs> this, is a, this is your challenge. <laughs> your actually. challenge is to figure it out. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> nice. Okay, so it's a rangefinder. Yep. Manual settings. Manual settings. Similar. Yep. Up to five hundredth of a second. Auto. Does it so have? Does it have? Does it have like aperture priority or? So this is uh, full manual or shutter priority. Shutter priority. Cool. So, and I've never used a rangefinder before, so this is going to be an interesting uh, challenge. <laughs> right. So the challenge is, we've both got uh, some Ilford Delta. Uh, 400 never shot this before we're gonna give ourselves an hour we're gonna set a theme for each other and then just go out and shoot so we've seen the cameras so I've got a uh, Roly 35 and Noah's got the Canon Canonette and uh, yeah we're gonna go and shoot and then we'll come back and uh, see what we thought and give our opinions
What were your impressions of the uh, the Canonet then? Uh, well, the first impression when you first gave it to me and I was loading the film and I was just fiddling with it is just how smooth it is as a camera. So the shutter release and the, the loading me the uh, forward mechanism is incredibly smooth. I Even during the shoot, I was wondering if it's really pulling the film. Like it's just it's just butter smooth like that. And when you're shooting, it's uh, it doesn't make any noises. So it's really stealthy. It's really quiet. What I noticed also about it is now this is my first experience with a rangefinder, and my impression of what a rangefinder should be is also something that I almost wouldn't feel in the hand. Now for me, I'm not a huge guy. I thought it was a big camera. I thought it was also hefty. Like it had some significant weight to it. Uh, I didn't use any neck strap. So holding it like this, just walking around, I was worried it would fall just because, because of the weight of it. Uh, other than that, it's uh, I think it's a great camera to walk around. Uh, I'm still excited about seeing what photos uh, uh, I took. Um, I wasn't like aiming for anything particular to shoot. There are uh, the, the time limit, I suppose, was quite a challenge because it came to a point where you're like, okay, well, gotta shoot anything. We gotta go through that roll, <laughs> finish it in time. And I did eventually finish it in time. It was 36 exposures is too much for one hour. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's hope there's something worth showing. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, you tell me, what, what did you think about the little guy? Um, yeah, for me, the, uh, the 35, with not being able to see you were focusing, I, it's really something that is <clears throat> trying to get your head around it. Mm. So I was constantly, am I right? It, it, yeah. And you like almost wanting to pace the scene. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but, yeah. But yeah, so I haven't got a clue whether uh, any of the shots are actually going to be in focus. But uh, That actually is one of the skills that I think one should work on if you want to shoot uh, film or photography in general. I think we need to be able to estimate the values and the distance is one of them. My first experience was when I used the um, medium format uh, Franca Solida 3. So that is a medium format camera, 6x6. Uh, it has a Galilean viewfinder, but no focus aid whatsoever. Yeah. And I only shot one roll while I was filming that camera, but by the time I finished, I had a better, I kind of developed a better skill estimating distances. Maybe short distances up to seven, eight feet at least, but I can get them to a, to a reliable accuracy yeah so uh, this is it's one of the reasons why I chose this for you and I was like oh yeah Richard <laughs> you need to work on this now <laughs> yeah it was definitely a bit of a challenge the uh, the camera to get used to but um, I don't know as part of the fun I guess so yeah this was an interesting challenge um, setting ourselves a camera that we'd never even seen before and um, also a, um, giving ourselves an hour so it was uh, definitely a challenge but um, something that I'd quite like to try again um, maybe I don't know what do you think different cameras different different cameras different film stock uh, maybe we can go with uh, setting some themes uh, definitely go with 24 exposures next time <laughs> but say we can we, what we can also do is possibly set the uh, the family of cameras say for example two rangefinders two medium format cameras or two point and shoes so today was a bit more open yeah. uh, we ended up I, I suppose yeah there was cer certain similarities in uh, what we've come up with for each other but yeah we definitely need to do this again and um, more than once definitely Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm going to go and uh, develop the film and then I'll scan it and uh, yeah, put this video together and then maybe I'll give my closing thoughts on, uh, well, especially my shots anyway. I'll, I might obviously send Noah his images and see what he says, but um, yeah, so this is a, definitely an interesting challenge, something different, something a bit fun. It only took a couple of hours into town, had an hour shoot and then back, so it's something that anyone can do. Uh, yeah, so interested to see. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, we'll do it again. So, we'll do it. Cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, as you can see from my frames, a lot of them weren't in focus. I don't even know what went wrong there. It was quite difficult with not having that security of like an SLR where you can actually see what's in focus. Definitely a strange experience. Also, as you saw in the, uh, the video, he gave me a very strange light meter, something that I've never used or seen before. I guess it's just like a uh, spot meter. But because I'd never seen it or used it before, I didn't really have the confidence in it. Quite a few of my shots are quite dark, 
um, but I didn't overexpose, I actually shot at box speed, so that might be part of the issue. The next time I do this challenge, a bit like the challenge I did with the Ektar and the Portra, I actually developed these at home and scanned them at home, so I think for these challenges it's probably going to be better to send them out and get them scanned properly and developed properly because then I'm taking the equation of me out and any issues that I have with um, developing or my chemicals or streaking on the negatives from the drying and, and then the scanning. So yeah, I'll probably do that next time again. <laughs> it's another epic fail. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.